Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about solar flares, and how a major one could have a significant impact on our daily lives. Imagine a sudden bright explosion of energy on the sun's surface. That's a solar flare, a powerful burst of radiation that can send particles and electromagnetic waves hurtling towards Earth. Now these aren't something out of a science fiction novel. They're a real and regular occurrence in our solar system. The sun has an 11-year cycle, with periods of high and low solar activity, known as solar maximum and solar minimum. During a solar maximum, we can see an increase in the number of solar flares, while during a solar minimum, they become less frequent. But why should we down here on Earth be concerned about these distant cosmic fireworks? Well, while the Earth's magnetic field and atmosphere do a great job of protecting us from the harmful radiation of solar flares, the intense electromagnetic waves can still cause some significant disruptions. The most immediate concern is the potential impact on our technology. These electromagnetic waves can interfere with satellite communications, navigation systems, and even power grids, causing widespread blackouts. For a society that's increasingly dependent on technology, this could have some serious implications. For instance, a recent solar flare event served as a timely reminder of our vulnerability. It was a wake-up call for many, prompting us to consider how well prepared we are to handle such a situation. So in this video, we'll be focusing on how we can prepare before and respond after a major solar flare. We'll be taking a survivalist's perspective, looking at everything from shielding electronics to securing alternative energy sources from preparing emergency kits to planning communications. Now that we have a basic understanding of solar flares, let's delve into how we can prepare for such an event. Knowledge is power, and in this case, it can be a lifesaver. Stay informed about solar activities. Being up to date with solar activity forecasts is crucial. Real-time updates from reliable sources can provide us with an early warning system, giving us precious time to prepare for a potential solar flare. Now, where can you get these updates? The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, is a reliable source. They provide space weather alerts that you can subscribe to. They have a range of services including email alerts, RSS feeds, and even a mobile app. Other sources include the Space Weather Prediction Center and NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory. Staying informed isn't just about passively receiving information, it's also about understanding what these alerts mean, how to interpret them, and how they translate into actionable steps for your preparedness plan. By staying informed, you are already one step ahead in your preparation. Knowledge isn't just power. In this context, it's a tool for survival. Solar flares can wreak havoc on our electronics. Let's explore how to shield them. Imagine this. A colossal burst of energy erupts from the sun, sending a wave of electromagnetic energy toward Earth. This is a solar flare, and it has the potential to render our modern electronics utterly useless. But don't fret there's a way to protect our devices from such an event, and it's called a Faraday cage. Named after the 19th century scientist Michael Faraday, a Faraday cage is a type of enclosure designed to block external static and non-static electric fields. It's essentially a shield against electromagnetic energy. The cage works by distributing that energy around its exterior, leaving whatever's inside untouched. Now, you might be picturing a giant metal cage, but a Faraday shield can take many forms. In fact, you can make one yourself using common household items. Here's a quick DIY guide to get you started. First, you'll need some aluminum foil, a plastic bag or a box, and a non-conductive material like cardboard or rubber. Start by wrapping your electronic device in the non-conductive material. Then cover it with at least three layers of aluminum foil. Make sure you cover all sides and corners. Next, place the wrapped device into the plastic bag or box. And just like that, you've made a simple Faraday bag. But how do you know if it works? You can test its effectiveness using a simple AM-FM radio. Place the radio inside your DIY Faraday bag, then try tuning it. If you've done it right, the radio should be unable to pick up a signal. Remember, the goal here isn't to live in fear of the next solar flare, but to be prepared to ensure that if and when the next flare hits, you'll have functional devices to communicate with the world, gather information, and make informed decisions. Shielding your electronics can ensure you have functional devices post-flare. Power outages are a common aftermath of solar flares. Having an alternative energy source is crucial. In a world where we're so dependent on electricity, a solar flare could leave us powerless, literally. But don't worry, 
there are ways to stay powered up, even when the grid goes down. Let's start with solar panels. They're a fantastic source of renewable energy, and they're particularly useful when conventional power sources fail. Now you might wonder, won't solar panels be affected by a solar flare? Well, not if you've EMP-proofed them. EMP-proofing your solar setup means protecting it from electromagnetic pulses which can fry electronics. You can do this by using a combination of metal shielding and grounding techniques. It's a bit technical, but with some research and effort, you can ensure your solar panels survive a solar flare. Next up, generators. They're a reliable source of power and come in a variety of types, gas, propane, diesel, and even solar power generators. Choose one that suits your needs and resources. Now here's a tip. If you're using a fuel power generator, you need to store that fuel safely. Keep your fuel in a cool, well-ventilated area away from living spaces. Use containers designed for fuel storage and ensure they're tightly sealed to prevent leaks. And remember, never store fuel near a heat source or open flame. Speaking of safety, it's also worth considering wind and water power as potential energy sources. Wind turbines and water wheels might seem old-fashioned, but they're effective, renewable, and unaffected by solar flares, so there you have it. Solar panels, generators, wind and water power. These are your allies when the lights go out. Each has its pros and cons, but all of them provide a way to keep you powered up when a solar flare strikes. Remember, planning and preparation are key. Securing your energy alternatives now means you won't be scrambling in the dark later. With these alternatives, you won't be left in the dark. In any emergency, having a well-stocked kit is essential. When preparing for a solar flare, this kit should include the basics, water, food, and medical supplies. Remember, a solar flare can disrupt power and water supplies, so it's crucial to have enough to last you for at least a few days. Now, there are additional tools and supplies you might need in a post-flare scenario. This may include a hand-cranked or battery-operated radio, flashlights, extra batteries, and a manual can opener. Don't forget about personal hygiene items and important documents. The trick is to pack a comprehensive but compact emergency kit. You want to have everything you need, but it also has to be portable. This means prioritizing items based on their necessity and choosing multi-purpose tools whenever possible. And remember, once you've packed your kit, don't just forget about it, regularly check and update it as needed. A well-prepared kit can be a lifesaver in the aftermath of a solar flare. Communication is key during any crisis. Let's explore non-electric dependent communication options. In the aftermath of a solar flare, typical means of communication may fail, so having alternatives is crucial. Think about options like battery-powered or hand-crank radios. These can pick up emergency broadcasts even when the power is out. Also consider investing in a set of walkie-talkies. They're perfect for keeping in touch with your group over short distances. Practice using these tools regularly so you're comfortable with them in a real emergency. Now let's talk about your communication plan. Every member of your group should know how and when to use these communication tools. The plan should also detail meeting points and times in case you get separated. Remember, your communication tools should be stored in EMP-proof containers to protect them from the effects of a solar flare. With a solid communication plan, you'll stay connected even when the grid goes down. Your home is your fortress. Let's fortify it against potential solar flare impacts. Now, one of the first things you'll want to consider is installing surge protectors. They might seem like small things, but they pack a punch when it comes to safeguarding your electronics from sudden voltage spikes caused by solar flares. They're your first line of defense, catching that surge before it can fry your devices. Now, moving on to a bigger picture, let's talk about home reinforcement. Solar flares can potentially cause electrical fires, so it's crucial to have fire safety measures in place. Consider installing fire-resistant materials around your home, especially near wiring and electrical equipment. A fire extinguisher is a must-have, and it's essential to ensure that everyone in the household knows how to use it correctly. Another potential impact of solar flares is structural damage due to intense heat. To protect your home, consider investing in heat-reflective paint or screens for your windows. These can significantly reduce the amount of heat absorbed by your home keeping it cooler and reducing the risk of heat-related damage. Remember, the goal here isn't to turn your home into a bunker, but rather to make it more resilient in the face of potential solar flare impacts. It's about being proactive, taking steps to minimize risk and maximize safety. Lastly, keep in mind that these are just guidelines, not hard and fast rules. Every home is different, and what works best for you will depend on your specific circumstances. 
So, take the time to assess your home, identify potential vulnerabilities, and address them accordingly. With these precautions, your home will be a safe haven. The flare has hit. Now it's time to put your plans into action. First things first, once the solar flare event has passed, it's crucial to assess the damage. Be sure to tread carefully though, as there might be hidden dangers. Check for structural damages to your property. Look for any fire hazards and ensure your gas lines are intact. Remember, safety is paramount. Now, it's time to activate your emergency plans. This is when your preparation truly shines. You've got your communication plan in place, stick to it. Reach out to your loved ones, confirm everyone's safety, then look at your supplies. Start rationing immediately. You don't know how long you might need them to last. In the aftermath of a solar flare, staying updated is essential. It's time to dust off those protected devices you've so carefully shielded. Tune into reliable sources of news and information. And don't forget about the power of community. Reach out to your neighbors, share updates, and lend a helping hand where you can. Collaboration can be a powerful tool during times of crisis. Managing your power consumption is another critical aspect. Remember, energy might be in short supply. Prioritize its use. Focus on the essentials. This is not the time to binge watch your favorite show. It's about survival. Finally, as you navigate through this challenging time, remember to document your experiences. This might seem trivial amidst a crisis, but trust me, it's not. Learning from these experiences is invaluable. It helps you better prepare for the future. And who knows, your story might someday help someone else better handle a similar situation. Post-flare actions are just as important as pre-flare preparations. After all, survival isn't just about making it through the event, it's about thriving afterward. So stay safe, stay strong, and remember you're not alone in this. But we've covered a lot today. Let's recap. We started off with a discussion about solar flares and their potential impacts on modern society, using the recent significant solar flare event as a timely example. We then moved into the meat of our discussion, focusing on practical ways to prepare for and respond to a major solar flare. Firstly, we talked about the importance of staying informed. Real-time updates from reliable sources like NOAA and other space weather alerts are vital in times of solar flare events. Then we looked at how to shield electronics using a Faraday cage. We walked through how to make your own Faraday bag and how to test it for effectiveness. Next, we covered securing alternative energy sources. We discussed solar panels, generators, and the importance of EMP proofing your setups. We also touched on safe fuel storage practices. We then moved on to preparing emergency kits. We've outlined the essentials you need to include, such as water, food, medical supplies, and additional tools for post-flare scenarios. Planning communications was another key topic. We explored options for non-electric dependent communication and the importance of setting up and testing gear stored in EMP-proof containers. We also talked about how to protect your home by installing surge protectors and reinforcing against potential fire hazards and structural damage. And after a solar flare has occurred, we discussed how to assess damage, activate emergency plans, monitor updates, manage power consumption, and document experiences to learn from the event and share stories. Each of these steps is crucial in ensuring your safety and survival during a major solar flare event. It's important to review and update your preparedness plans regularly to ensure you're always ready for whatever comes your way. Remember, preparation is key. Stay safe and stay prepared.